Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Psalm 80 is a psalm that was written by Asaph. And so the occasion is unknown. But as far as the content goes, this is clearly a prayer for restoration. There's a lot of language involved in the uh, the psalm asking the Lord for restoration of Israel, not for Asaph as an individual, but for the people of Israel collectively. There are a number of pleas for salvation. The theme is basically one of Israel has been rejected or Israel has been in some ways diminished among the nations. The Lord has been angry with them, and the psalmist is calling for restoration. The poetic imagery includes Israel being conveyed as a a vine or the vineyard of the Lord. This stays um, with us all through Scripture. In fact, Israel is referred to as the the Lord's vineyard. And so this poetic um, inclusion is interesting within the psalm. Also, the Lord is referred to as the shepherd of Israel. Psalm 23, you may recall, says, the Lord is my shepherd. And so let's read now Psalm 80. For the director of music, to the tune of the lilies of the covenant, of Asaph, a psalm. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might, come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us, so that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us an object of derision to our neighbors, and our enemies mock us. Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, so that we may be saved. You transplanted a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Its branches reached as far as the sea, its shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars from the forest ravage it, and insects from the fields feed on it. Return to us, God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine, the root your hand has planted, the sun you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down. It is burned with fire at your rebuke, and your people perish. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand the Son of Man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. So Asaph, after penning a long prefix, begins to speak prophetically on behalf of Israel. He calls out, Hear us, shepherd of Israel. You who lead Joseph like a flock. And so the Lord indeed is, um, is Israel's shepherd, as David called him in Psalm 23. This is a psalm of Asaph, but Asaph served under David, and uh, he probably heard this terminology from King David. And he refers to the Lord as being the one who sits enthroned between the cherubim. This was revealed in Exodus as the Lord was giving the details of how the tabernacle of Moses was to be arranged and created, and part of it was this imagery of the Lord sitting enthroned between two cherubim. The psalmist goes on to say, Awaken your might, come and save us. So this call for saving them or salvation from uh, whatever is taking place is is offered up uh, the first of many times in this psalm. In verse 3, he says, Restore us, O God. This call for restoration is also a constant refrain within the psalm. O God, make your face to shine on us so that we may be saved. 
There's another reference to their uh, salvation. The psalmist goes on to ask the Lord uh, how long Israel must suffer. Apparently, um, although the occasion is unknown, the psalmist is either watching current events or speaking prophetically. But in verse 4, he says, How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them to drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us an object of derision to our neighbors, and our enemies mock us. He then goes back to his familiar refrain, Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face to shine on us so that we may be saved. It's almost like a chorus, and um, indeed, in its day, it was a song. It was um, a song that the prefix informs us was uh, done to a certain tune called the Lilies of the Covenant. And so the the chorus had to do with this wording, restore us so that we may be saved constantly over and over again. The psalmist then goes to portray Israel poetically as the Lord's neglected vineyard. Listen, verse 8, you transplanted a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and you planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Its branches reached as far as the sea, and its shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars from the forest ravage it, and insects from the fields feed on it. Return to us, God Almighty. There's that call once again for Israel's restoration. Return to us, God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine, the root your hand has planted, the sun you have raised up for yourself. This language um, calling Israel the Lord's son is um, consistent, once again, with the Exodus account where the Lord um, told Pharaoh, that Israel was his son, and indeed his firstborn son among the nations. The psalmist then refers to Israel as the Lord's vineyard. He says, your vine is cut down, it is burned with fire at your rebuke, and your people perish. The psalmist then um, offers what could be a prophetic prayer for Jesus, Um, or it could be referring to the king in Asaph's day, which would have been either David early on or or Solomon late in Asaph's life, it says, let your hand rest on the man at your right hand. The son of man you have raised up for yourself. Of course, the New Testament tells us that Jesus was exalted to the right hand of God the Father. It was prophesied that he would be David's Lord who sat at Yahweh's right hand. And he was also called the son of man, first prophetically and Uh, Daniel chapter 7, but perhaps even earlier here in Psalm 80, the Messiah, Jesus, is being referred to as the Son of Man. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the Son of Man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. And so this uh, favor resting on the Son of Man will result in Israel consistently serving and loving Yahweh. It concludes with a final plea for revival Uh, for restoration and for salvation. Verse 18, Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face to shine on us so that we may be saved. So it's a a magnificent prayer and uh, prophecy calling for the Lord God to restore the fortunes of Israel. And we agree with the sentiments expressed and the prayers and Uh, the yearning expressed by Asaph in this powerful psalm. Lord, we just pray for Israel's restoration. We pray that they would indeed be revived, restored, and saved. Lord, just as Asaph penned some 3,000 years ago, we agree today in prayer. Lord, come and save your vineyard. Make them once again uh, your firstborn son among the nations. Lord, um, we agree with the chorus You are the Lord God Almighty. Make your face to shine on Israel. Restore them so that they may be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. 
It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.